Microsoft Sales Copilot brings your CRM data to where you're working every day inside Outlook and inside Microsoft Teams. We know that sellers don't generally go in and work inside their CRM all the time, but it's really important to keep that data up to date. And so this is a tool that really helps with that. It brings an experience into Outlook that allows you to do updating and editing of your CRM data, as well as AI tools that give you summaries of all the things that allow you to generate content that give you analytics inside teams on your transcripts of your meetings, identifying action points and more. So in this video, I'm going to take you through everything you need to know to understand what Sales Copilot is and how it works. We're going to start by having a look at that experience in Outlook that allows you to update and work with your CRM data. Then we'll have a look at the experience of generative AI, how it helps you to draft emails and summarize things that are going on. We'll have a look at the Teams experience and how you can use that to extract action points from your meetings and then summarize those and send them straight to your customer in an automatically generated email. And we'll also have a look at some of the roadmap items that have just been recently announced. And finally, the licensing question. Everyone always wants to know the licensing question. We'll have a look at how much it costs you and how you can get started. So let's kick off here with the experience inside Outlook. All of this data, as always with these videos, completely fake. I've got an email here from Sandra, and this is my sales co-pilot experience sitting inside Outlook. So let's have a look at that experience first. I know you can probably see some AI things there, but we're going to come back to that. To switch across into the tab here called Dynamics 365, and you'll see straight away we've got a bunch of information here around the contact, the person who's in there, the opportunities that are related to that contact, and also the account that's related to that contact. Now, if you're using Salesforce, you'll have a similar experience that says Salesforce and it will allow you to connect in the same way. If I go here and click through to Sandra's record, we've got some more details and I can also go in and edit this. So let's say I found out something about her mobile number here was incorrect or perhaps she's had a promotion and changed her job title. I can do all of those things here and just click update and that will go straight through. So in terms of being able to keep your CRM data up to date, I haven't had to leave Outlook at all. Often that new information is coming through in here in the person's signature or details of the email and I can just go in and edit all of that information. I can do the same with editing opportunities and accounts. As long as my admin has given me permission to do that, we'll have a look shortly at that experience because the admin can set up what you can edit and what you can work with here, as well as the specific fields that are available to you, including stuff that's custom to you. So that's what happens when it's an existing customer. But let's take a look at when I get an email here from somebody new. So we've got Trish, we've got an email here with some stuff in the signature, and it has recognized that this person is not in my CRM system. All I do here is click add contact. It will automatically fill in as much as it can. So we've got the first name, last name, email, mobile phone and business phone there. It hasn't picked up the job title, but it's pretty easy to just go in there and type that in or copy and paste it in there. And I could also enter that company name to link her up to an account. Click save and that has automatically just created that record. So that ability to do that data entry of incoming things just got a whole lot easier and faster because honestly nobody in sales really likes doing their data entry, do they? I can also choose to save that email to Dynamics and that will appear in the timeline there. Now, before we get into these AI features, I do want to show you the experience for configuring those forms for that data entry. So first of all, you will need to be an admin to do this and these are not settings per individual user this is a setting for that whole environment that's connected to that CRM system. So we've got a very important part here, which is that you can opt in to use the AI features that I'm about to show you. But the forms that are inside the system, you'll see that by default, we've got contact opportunity account coming soon. Lead will be part of this as well. So let's say I come in here, we can choose, do we allow new contacts to be created? So that's what I've just done, but you can enable that or not. We can also choose which fields are here and in which order. So let's say I wanted the mobile phone to be below the business phone. I can drag that down. Let's say I put that in the stupid place. <laughs> we can put it back again. Maybe I don't want people to edit the 
city for instance and you can turn off editing I can add other fields in here so anything else that is in my account record or in my contact record or whatever we're working with here so let's say I wanted gender and I can add that in and we can put that into the system there and allow that to be edited or to say no thanks I don't want that anymore we can also choose the key pieces that appear on the abbreviated card. So when we come in here and have a look at this piece here, you'll see this has got Trish Weller CEO, which is her full name and her job title. And that's where this is coming from here, the company name and the job title. So you can choose other things in here. They need to be things that are in the section above so that you've got that short card and everything that's going on there. When you're happy with that, you can just click publish. You've also got the ability to come in here and choose other record types. So if you're working with custom tables and things, you can bring them in there all of those pieces that we're looking at if you've got your own custom fields on those data tables you can bring them in there as well so I've looked at this for instance in a non-profit scenario for fundraising and you want to bring in lifetime giving that's not a standard thing in the sales application but it's been added in you can have that sitting in the panel on the side so whatever you need for your specific business or industry you can very easily bring that in with that really simple drag and drop interface now I know we all want to see the AI stuff, right? So, <laughs> so let's take a look at that. We come back in here and we've got highlights. So first thing, this is actually my favorite thing here is the summary of the email. So this is actually going through and summarizing the email thread and check this out, save summary. And then I can actually go in and save that against a record in Dynamics. Now I don't currently have an opportunity set up for that one. Let's go back to Sandra here and have a look at another example. So we've got the summary of the email. I can click save summary and you'll see I've got a couple of opportunities related to her. There's an old one there I probably should have closed off, but it's related to this website design. I'm going to click save and then when I go into my CRM system, we'll find that saved in there in the timeline. Let's take a look at that opportunity here in the timeline. There we go. There's the AI generated email summary and all of the information there. It's saying it's coming from Sales Copilot and that's going to give me all of the bullet points that are in there. So again all of this is really designed around reducing the amount of manual work and manual data entry that goes on in a system instead of having to write a summary of the email because who does that guess what ai does that we've also got the ability to draft emails so if you've used chat gpt basically same thing being brought into the context here so let's say we go back to trish and she's asked for uh, an appointment she's interested in learning more I can click on this one here to say reply to an inquiry and this will craft that so those particular buttons that are there are designed to be specifically for a sales scenario because this is the sales co-pilot so it's actually working in that context and for those scenarios so a couple of things that are important that are going on here that are a little bit different from just going out to chat GPT to write this for you firstly it's able to pick up the context of that email so yes it's looked at that it can also check my calendar so if you're doing something where the customer hasn't suggested a time what it will do is go in and find the next available time slot with a half hour break after your previous meeting and suggest that the other thing that's really important here are these little footnote references so microsoft is very very big on transparent and responsible ai if you've used chat gpt at all you'll know it does hallucinate and make things up so this is actually giving you a reference to where this has come from so i'm very happy to discuss your website redesign so if i have a look at this this is telling me that it's from outlook it's going you know this is the email from trish and again we've got another one here she said i'm keen to know about your design packages and so it's referred to that so it's actually giving you those specific references around what's going on with all of those things you are in control right so it doesn't send that email for you there's not even a send button here you have to say copy the content so this whole concept of copilot across all of the microsoft services that you're in control we then click reply to that email i can come in here and then just paste that information in to the email so we'll just paste that there and there it is and I can make any edits and then send that off so I'm in complete control but it's taken a fair bit of the work out of it for me let's just uh, delete that because 
Trish isn't real and I've already sent her enough fake emails <laughs> in building in building this demo. So we have got the ability to create generative email. You can actually just go in and describe the email you want. Please write a response about this type of thing. Make it a friendly tone, all those types of things that you can do with generative AI and a summary of the email. So the other thing we've got here is that all of this also works with Teams. So you'll see we've got a Collaborate in Teams option here. This will, if you don't already have a related team, give you an experience like this where you can hover over this and click Set up an account team. And that will allow you to either create a new team or use an existing team. If you create a new team, this will take you through a wizard and a template that will bring in anyone else related to that customer and it will set up a team that has a folder structure, a private channel, a channel that you can use to share with the customer. Let's uh, take a look at cute little person there with lots of arms <laughs> saying that that's all ready to go. Here's my Teams channel. This takes maybe 30 seconds or so to spin up. I've got a general channel and I've also got a shared channel that I can use to do collaboration with the customer here. So we've got our posts in there. I've also got files ready to go in a folder structure. It has brought my OneNote in here. So this is actually a really important part of the whole platform is to start doing that note taking in context. That's obviously empty because I haven't done anything yet. If we go back to the general channel, uh, again, I've got a place here where I can put my files and that's all been organized. The OneNote again, and importantly, my Dynamics record is pinned in here as well. I can do all of my editing and working with that account. So this is a template that works for accounts. There's a similar experience if you're working on something that has an active opportunity that you could have an opportunity template and it would set those things up. If I've already got some Teams collaboration going on, so this is an example here where it's showing me that there is an existing channel. It's picking that up because I've already got the Dynamics 365 record pinned, connected in there. So it doesn't even have to be a whole team dedicated to that customer or opportunity. I've got one here that's major clients. There's a channel for that customer and that record is pinned. Then in this Copilot experience here, it's allowing me to do that. So straight away in context now, not only have I got all that Dynamics CRM data in there, I've also got visibility and I can click through and open that particular channel that exists in Teams. Now the other part that goes with Teams is that you can get insights and AI generated analytics and tasks and things on your Teams meeting transcripts. And that also surfaces up here as an option to summarize the meeting. So here's an example of that, where we've had a conversation with a client, we've gone back and forth on the conversation. And again, this is in this sales context. So it's really looking for things like questions asked by the seller, the talk time, it's picking out sentiment analysis, next, action points that need to be done. And then from here, you can go in and say, let's use that. And then you will get an experience like this, where it's giving you a meeting summary inside that sales co-pilot, and you can click add to email and do the same thing that we saw earlier. Now, other things that are coming on the roadmap here on the team side of things, the ability to have live things going on, live suggestions going on inside the Teams meeting. So this is an example here where someone's mentioned a competitor and you're like, oh, what's going on with the competitor? If you're using that competitor table inside Dynamics 365, the competitor was mentioned and it's picking that up and it's pulling out those strengths and weaknesses from inside your CRM. Other things on the roadmap that we've got coming in here, summaries of things. So we've got this ability to have the summary of an opportunity. This one's in the context of an appointment. So all of this is kind of appearing around the place, not just inside the email, but in the appointment. You can also have this experience inside Dynamics 365 sitting in a pane down the side as well. So what we've got here is the opportunity summary. We've got a note that the seller made, and then this can help you with meeting preparation preparation is the next thing that's coming through. That ability to say, here are the notes and appointments and all of the history and everything that's gone on. But here's where it gets 
really next level exciting because two co-pilots are better than one. So there is another piece here, which is the Microsoft 365 co-pilot. So Microsoft 365 co-pilot allows you to do all sorts of generative AI on things like PowerPoint and Word and Excel and all of those tools. So you can go into PowerPoint and say, hey, please create me a proposal based on this Word document. But if you're also using that with the sales copilot, now your CRM data is also part of that context. Now, all of this is bringing AI and the large language model into your tenant, into your secure information. So this is much more secure than going out and putting it out into ChatGPT and revealing all the information. This is actually bringing it inside where you work. So now you've got the full context of all of your business data, your documents, your chats, your emails, and with the sales copilot and Microsoft 365 copilot together, also your CRM data. So now we're saying, please create a PowerPoint deck based on this opportunity. This is staggeringly good. I'm <laughs> it's gonna save so much time, it's amazing. So how much does all of this cost? That's the, the next question. So what we've got here, if we have a look at the website, and this is actually still branded Viva Sales because Copilot used to be called Viva Sales, but same price, none of that changed. This is the standalone price. However, if you're a Dynamics 365 user, you're getting it included in the Dynamics 365 Sales Enterprise or Sales Premium license. So if you're buying it standalone, if you're on sales, professional and I would actually suggest now might be a time to review that decision if you can because the value of those higher level Dynamics 365 sales licenses with this included is just amazing but if you need to buy it standalone if you're working with Salesforce this is the US price per user per month but if you're in Dynamics 365 sales then it's included with the enterprise license you also get this experience inside Dynamics 365 sales where the co-pilot is now inside your CRM as well as inside Outlook check out my video here if you would like to get a first look at that how it's working with opportunity summaries account summaries meeting preparation and a stack more